Hey guys, it's Dave here from Creative Path Films and today we're talking about stops. Today we're going to cover f-stops, t-stops and just stops in general and we're going to talk about how they apply to the exposure triangle as well as filtration. Alright, let's get into it. So what is an exposure stop? Well, to put it simply, a stop is simply a doubling or a halving of the amount of light being exposed by your camera's sensor or by a piece of film. So if you increase your exposure by one stop, you get double the amount of light. And if you reduce your exposure by one stop, you get half the amount of light. Okay, so that's the easy part. Now let's see how this rule applies to each part of the exposure triangle, so aperture, ISO and shutter speed, as well as to filtration, so lens filters and lighting gel. All right, let's start with ISO. ISO simply measures your camera's sensitivity to light. So if we look at this ISO scale, a one-stop increase or decrease occurs when the value doubles or halves. Pretty straightforward. So a jump from 200 ISO to 400 ISO is a one-stop increase. It should be noted that most cameras will allow you to control your ISO in either full-stop or one-third stop increments. There is also a half-stop increment, but these are less common. Personally, I prefer one-third stop increments because I find full-stop increments to be a little bit too big of a jump, and I like that added precision. It might be worth committing this one-third scale to memory because you can't work these values out mathematically. They don't always divide evenly by three. All right, now let's look at shutter speed. The same rule applies to shutter speed as it does to ISO. Every time you double or half your shutter speed, you get a one-stop increase or decrease. So if we change our shutter from 1 50th of a second to 1 100th of a second, we're opening the shutter for half the amount of time, and therefore that is a one-stop decrease in the amount of light. If we do the opposite and go from 1 50th to 1 25th of a second, we're opening the shutter for twice as long and therefore getting a one-stop increase in light. Most cameras will allow you to adjust your shutter in either one half stop or one third stop increments. Last on the exposure triangle is aperture. Stops relating to aperture are commonly referred to as f-stops in photography or t-stops in cinema. There is a slight variation between the two, but that is a topic for another video. So let's have a look at the following aperture scale. On the scale, we have the following values. F1, 1, 1.4, 2, 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11, 16, and 22. Aperture is a little bit of an outlier in that it's the only exposure control where doubling or halving the numerical value doesn't equal a one-stop change. With aperture, it equals a two-stop change, just to be confusing. So let's give you an example. Let's start at F2. Now, if we double F2's numerical value, that gives us F4. But if we look on the scale, we've actually jumped two positions going from f2 past f2.8 to f4, equaling a two-stop jump. This scale is one that you definitely want to learn off by heart because it's not one that makes sense with any kind of simple math. Let's talk about what's physically happening inside the lens every time we change our aperture value. Every time you go up and down a value on the scale, the iris inside the lens is physically doubling or halving in size. Aperture scales come in both full stop, half stop, and one third stop increments. But to be honest, if you're new to this, I suggest just focusing on the full stop values. In the 10 years that I've been shooting, I've never needed to learn the half stop and third stop values off by heart. It's just not something that you use very often. All right, so that's it for the exposure triangle. Let's give you a real world example where we bring it all together. Let's say we're shooting a wedding for a really good friend of ours, and we want to be able to move really quickly in a run and gun situation. You've decided you want to be able to shoot at three different frame rates, 25 frames per second for normal speed, 50 frames per second for slow motion, and then 100 frames per second for extra slow motion. Let's assume that you can program three different sets of values into your camera like you can with a Canon 1DX. 
So let's say that we want to keep our aperture consistent so that our background blur looks the same in all our shots. And we need to change our shutter speed so that we adhere to the 180 degree rule. So this means for every profile, we're gonna have a different shutter speed. So therefore we need to compensate for that with our ISO values. To start off with, with our base profile, we'll have 25 frames per second and a 1 50th shutter. And we've set our ISO to 100. When we change to 50 frames per second, our shutter increases to 1 100th, giving us a one stop decrease. This means we need to increase our ISO by one stop, changing it from 100 to 200. For our third profile, we have 100 frames per second, which gives us a 1 200th shutter. This is a two stop difference from our base value. So that means we need to increase our ISO by two stops taking it from 100 up to 400. You can see here that every time the frame rate doubles, everything else doubles as well. So now we've got our three profiles programmed in. And if we've done our job correctly, every time you switch between them, our exposure should remain consistent. Okay guys, so I just realized exactly how many different numbers and scales and things there are in this video so far. So if you made it this far, well done. If you find it useful, what I'm considering doing is making a bit of a cheat sheet that will give you all of these different scales and values to refer to. So if you'd find that useful, let me know down in the comments below. And if I do end up making something, I'll put a link to that in the description. All right, back to the video. Okay, so that's it for the exposure triangle. Now let's have a look at how stops relates to filtration. So lighting gels and lens filters. ND or neutral density is the type of filtration that blocks out light in a neutral way, meaning that it doesn't create any sort of color shift. Different grades of ND are measured in increments of 0.3. So 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, 1.2, 1 etc. So every time you jump up the scale, that corresponds to a one stop change. So a 0.3 filter equals a one stop filter and a 0.9 filter equals a three stop filter. Let's look at another real world example. Let's say you wanna shoot outdoors, but you want to be able to set your aperture to f2.8 to give you that nice blurred background. When you go outside, what you find is that your camera can only expose if you're up around f11. So the difference between f2.8 and f11 is a four stop difference. This means we need a four stop ND filter to be able to shoot at f2.8 which is an ND 1.2. So the same applies to lighting gels. Let's say you've got a light that is two stops too bright and you need to cut it down. Well, in that case, you'd need a two stop ND gel, which is ND 0.6. If you come to understand the language and the values that we've covered in this video, then that's likely to carry across to anything that you'll encounter in the future related to exposure. If you liked the level of depth that I went into in this video, let me know down in the comments below. I was gonna include image stabilization stops in this video as well, but I didn't want to bog it down any more than I needed to. So I'm gonna be doing a follow-up video just on that topic. So make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss out on that one. Thank you so much for watching. And if you learned something from today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up to let me know. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. What's a stop? Stop. And it wasn't funny. I thought it was being funny. But... Let's start with ISO. Oh, did you know? All right, so that's it for the exposure triangle. Let's give you a real world example where we bring it all together. <laughs> Shut up. Okay.